Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this weekly Svelte, we're going to be diving into an interesting technique and an interesting plugin for Svelte Kit that you may not have heard about considering it's brand new and it might not be the kind of thing that everybody loves. But let me tell you about why I love it and what I use it for. So first and foremost, what is this thing? Well, this plugin is the Svelte Kit Auto Import Plugin. Now, Svelte Kit auto import allows you to use components without importing them. And that may sound scary to you, but I'm going to talk a little bit about why I chose to use this, how we're using it, what we're using it for. Uh, but before we get into that, you can see it on 34 weekly downloads. This thing's brand new. Now, this is made by the amazing Chuan. He does a lot of great stuff, and I, I'm so sorry if I mispronounced your name. I am um, not extremely skilled in pronunciation, especially with names that I'm not super familiar with. But um, he does some incredible code art. Um, his blog is, is amazing. He does some seriously incredible code art. So give his stuff a look. Uh, I've been a big follow of his for a long time here just to follow his CSS doodle stuff and, and a lot of these things. So when he created this Svelte auto import, Svelte kit auto import plugin, I was really excited to see it. So let's take a look at this thing and how we use it and what it's about, why I like it. So first and foremost, to use an auto import plugin like this, you install it, Svelte Kit auto import, auto import. Then in your Vite, uh, Vite settings of your Svelte Kit config file, you say plugins, auto import, and then you tell it the directory in which you want your components to live. Now you can also auto import Svelte Kit specific things like maybe on mount, which I guess is a Svelte specific thing, um, you can auto import a whole ton of different things. There's mapping, there's, uh, you can pass it in an array for your components to say, Hey, where are the directories that my auto imported components will live? And there's also automatic naming. So if you name your component, my hyphen component, it will auto, uh, convert the component name to my component. Likewise, my, another component like this, you can see there's a lot of um, really small niceties in this thing. You can also have a prefix in here. So it will prefix the components name. So that way you can use it automatically without importing it. Uh, it's, it's really, really sick. And, um, again, this is one of those things that you may feel uncomfortable with the idea of this, but this plugin is so full featured. I want to show you all about it in explicitly how we're using it. Um, so check it out. You want to dive through their, their documentation here to get a full understanding of what this thing is about. But I do want to show you how we're using it and why we like it. Now you will see that there is a green underline. We're going to be talking a little bit about how to get rid of this as well as how to get rid of the, um, the issues with, uh, TypeScript because we use TypeScript as well. Okay. So as you can see here, I have a Svelte, uh, this is a, a new component. This is a component I'm working on for the new version of leveluptutorials.com. You can see, um, it, this is development, right? Browse the library. This is a component I'm working on right now. And it has a heading and it has a button. And those headings and buttons are being auto imported along with our layout. So you might say, dude, this, uh, <laughs> this feels really uncomfortable to use something that's auto imported, right? Um, I, d I don't know how I feel about that, right? It's not explicit. And the way I feel about it is I have kind of two different types of components. We have components that are a little bit more of the smarter components, the things that are maybe doing a little bit more. And then you have components that are almost more like actual HTML elements. And for me, I have an H component, which is our heading component. And that is taking the role of the H tag in HTML. So anytime we would use an H one through three, one through six, whatever, uh, you would use the H tag. So I made my own H tag, uh, of which you can see has levels, which can be one through six. That H level is whether it's a one, two, three, four, five, six, but this allows me to control its styling separate from what the semantic level of the heading is. So we'll be able to give it a, its own, uh, semantic, uh, level as well as attach different size attributes based on the size of this thing. And we also just have a layout with that type of margin and a button, which is just a generic button, right? And so these things to me are much more primitives. And the way I call them is I call them elements. So I have a whole folder of elements. 
Now, these are elements that I see largely as being very similar to HTML elements. And with HTML elements, you're not importing those on every page. Now, this might not be a satisfactory argument to you, but for me personally, I know that if something exists inside of my elements, it will exist in any component. We're going to talk about things like headings, um, basic layouts, grid component, a basic card component, a basic button, a basic toggle. These are things that I consider to be the, the small building primitives that I don't want to have to import 20 of them for every single component just to have a basic layout. I, I realize this will anger some people and you by no means have to do it this way. This is just how we like to do it. In fact, we did this in our React version of the site too and found it to be really nice. And another cool thing about using this with SvelteKit is all of the automatic CSS scoping stuff that you get. And you can do all of this by no means uh, without the automatic imports, but again, it's just something I like. So we have a folder of elements where all of our basic elements live. Let's take a look at our Svelte config file so you can see exactly what ours looks like. And let's take a look at right here where we're simply saying auto imports everything that's in our source elements folder and also on mount. I don't want to have to import an on mount. I just don't. So I, I, I don't. <laughs> it feels fine to me. Trust me. Uh, in practice, it feels A-OK. -okay. Now, you're going to get some TypeScript errors when you try to use any of these components because they're not defined. Now, from there, you have a global.d.ts file. And I'll make this available to you if you want to see it. But to have your TypeScript types available in all of these auto imported components, you just declare a const of whatever it is as a global declaration, a global variable. Declare const button is a type of import. And then we import the button and we grab the default import from that. What this does is it says anytime we have button as a component, we'll use the button from here. And that's going to make sure we get all of our correct TypeScript types. And that's another reason why I don't mind this, because uh, if we have TypeScript playing along nicely and we have Svelte playing along nicely, then you kind of got your whole library here. All you have to know is what's available inside of the elements. And again, some people are going to hate this. I can't say that enough. So we have global components here. We have button split, whatever, all of our stuff listed right here. And if we want to get rid of this green underline that is saying that uh, layout is not defined in Svelte missing declaration, then we can head to our VS Code preferences, Svelte, and then compiler. So what we're looking for is Svelte compiler warnings. And you can see we can add an item and we can say missing hyphen declaration and we're going to ignore that error and click OK. Now, again, heavy handed, because now if you have a missing anything, it's not going to Svelte, the Svelte compiler or the, uh, the Svelte compiler in VS Code is not going to warn you about it. Now, the reason why that doesn't bug me too much is that we still have to have TypeScript working for it to work fine. For instance, if we head into back to the browse page, um, do if I restart language server, or just save this, you can see that the green underline goes away. And so now we can utilize our global components just as if as if we wanted to have them here. And if I wanted to say fake component and try to use this thing, it's going to give you a right underline because we're using TypeScript. So the green underline adding that is not a big concern for me because TypeScript will step in and find those missing declarations anyways. OK, OK, so we have a, a several things. We have um, global components that are now being auto imported. We have suppressed the Svelte compiler warnings. We still get TypeScript support for them. And we kind of know what's up because they're all of our elements. Now, if you even have like your own documentation for internal documentation, like a storybook, then you could always have information about what elements are global. And to me, I got to love this. Now, one more small thing you might be saying, Scott, because uh, the way that the React version of this worked is that we had a Babel plugin that just automatically added an import at the top of all of our files to any missing component. That's not what this actually does. What this does is it scans when it's looking through your file and it finds this layout and says, hey, is this one of the global components? If it is, then it appends or prepends, I should say, the import into the script file or into the script tag on your page. And you don't need a script tag for this to work. It'll automatically add one if you don't have one. Uh, I'm about to add some script to this, this file. But 
uh, what this does is it's only adding the imports to the files where you need them. So that way it's not making all of these available globally project wide, making these things global variables, but it's actually taking care to import them into your code once it's used. So I found this approach to be really super smart. And overall, I got to say, I love this approach. I don't know. I don't want to say it for the eighth time, but if you hate this approach, I don't care. It's not for you. It's for the people who like this kind of thing. So check it out. Let me know what you think about this. Again, if you hate it, that's fine. Uh, if you love it, that's cool too. If you're indifferent, that's also cool. But I thought this is a plugin that we are basing a lot of our new design system around in the new version of Level Up Tutorials. And I've been working with this plugin now for about half a month or so. And the workflow to me has become really great. Because instead of having a class of a layout using an SCSS file, what I have is a layout component with its own scoped CSS with um, its own props, right? It feels like styled components in that way. Your props for your CSS stuff can now all of a sudden be typed. And that might be even to get a little bit in the weeds here. But we had um, pre prior to this a class based system. And you might be saying, Scott, CSS classes do all of this stuff. But what you don't get with CSS classes and appending classes on here, you don't get the type of um, styled component type of parameters that can come into your code that can be fully typed or even better yet, um, you know, if you have a, a class of layout with an augmenter or modifier of type of margin on it, then again, you're going to have to memorize all of that stuff. You're not going to get the code completion and it is a way, uh, way more opportunities to get it wrong, to be honest. So, um, I like this because we get this TypeScript scoping of our, uh, variables. you still get, like I said, TypeScript here. I don't know why style Int is giving me an error. That's a style Int issue, but overall check this thing out. Let me know what you think. This is kind of a long winded way to say, hey, um, you can auto import your components and it's really easy with this plugin. Chuan did an awesome job on this thing and I can't help but absolutely uh, have a great time when I'm working in this code base because of it. So check it out. I'll link uh, to the plugin in the show notes below. I'll also link to, well, I'll, I'll maybe have like a snippet of what we put in our globals.ts file and all of that so you can get going with this kind of thing yourself. Let me know what you think. As always, I'll see you in the next one. Have fun working in Svelte and have a great weekend.